Hey folks, welcome to this week's show. This week we got an exciting episode. We're chasing one of my favorite animals, the coyote, with two of some of my favorite people to trap with. My daughter Peyton and one of my best friends, Jason Webster. This is Trapping Time. Look who I got out of bed this morning to go check traps. Right where I caught my first kayak. Never gets old seeing those dogs bouncing. This is my story. This is my time. This is Trapping Time. Trapping Time is brought to you by Trapping Girl Incorporated, Night Owl Lures, Old South Lures, Southern Snares and Spot, Smokey's Deer Lure, Webster's Predator Control, Duke Traps, Wolf Creek Products, Sawmill Creek Baits and Lures. Well, Peyton, this makes number two. She is on a tear. Never caught a coyote a day in her life, catch one yesterday. She decides she wants to be like old dad and catch one every day. Um, what we have happening here is we've got deep woods right here, and we've got a nice little roadway coming into this big field behind us. And what, you caught a possum here the other day? Yeah. We're just doing a simple dirt hole. We had brought a little chunk of wood in to use as our backing, but this is just, if you're looking for a coyote super highway, this is it. Um, these traps have been here for about a week now, and the only thing we caught was a possum, and your mom caught a possum in the set over there, which is funny. Um, this coyote hasn't been caught in here very long because what was on top of the other set? Pee. Pee. We actually could see the urine puddled up on top of the peat moss on the other one, so it hasn't been too long that this coyote got caught, and it's probably, what, 130? Yeah. 1, 130, something like that, so um, this cold weather's really got them out moving even during the day. Uh, nice young coyote. But every coyote's a good coyote, isn't Peyton? Yeah. So what do you think about trapping when you're actually out doing it yourself and not uh, just tagging along with Dad? It's fun. Is it a lot of work? Yeah. You got a pretty good teacher? Mm, yeah, I guess. I guess. Uh, all right, well, let's get this coyote out of here. We're going to remake this set and see if uh, maybe we might be able to snag another one out of here. Hey, when we come back, we're going to show you the remake that put Peyton's Pennsylvania coyote in the bed of the truck. Don't go anywhere. from the hills of West Virginia. Smokey's Deer Lures presents the first and only real pre-orbital gland lure in the world. Applying pre-orbital gland lure to a licking branch will allow you to take a complete inventory of the bucks at your favorite hunting spot. Get yours at SmokeysDeerLure.com Well you see, trappers are a special breed of people. We're dedicated, committed, and passionate about what we do and who we are. Each and every one of us has an intense desire to be the very best we can. So in the world of skinny jeans, man buns, and pumpkin spice lattes, sometimes you just have to stop, push back, and tell the world, that's not me. Whether you're from the far north or in the deep south and anywhere in between, 
Southern Snares can help you succeed at getting the job done and being who you are. All right, let's get your trap bedded back in there. Put it straight down in. All right, slide it this way a little bit. Come on, keep going. There you go, push it down there. All right, let off of it. Take your peat moss. You take a little bit of this dirt here and put it around the bottom of that jaw. Like this? Bit. Yeah. Just kind of pack it right there on the jaw. Put a little more in there. You want to build that up around there. That? Push it down in there. All right. I'll pull it on the other side. Put your fingers. Keep your fingers out of there. All right. I'll take your peat. Grab that leaf right there. Let's pull it out of there. All right. Take your peat moss. Right up. I don't want no far did just to just kind of fan it completely out. All right. I'll take this dirt. Sprinkle a light coating on it. Shake it over there. There you go. Keep going. All right. All right. We got that. Now remember, we got to open your dirt hole back up because that coyote spilled it up. So you should be able to find your spot pretty easy in there. Yep, there it is. See if you can push it down. All right, you might have to pound it down there a little bit. Work it. All right, pull it back out. All right, now take your finger and pull that little bit of garbage out of there. There you go. All right, I'll take this loose garbage here. Pull it all into the center, right behind it. We want to make sure they work it from the front. Okay. I'll take this little chunk of wood that we used as backing before. Just lay it right across there. Give it a push it down in there. Alright, good deal. Alright, take your gloves off. We'll put some capital punishment in there. I always find that if I think it smells good, I think the coyotes will like it too. Is that what you think? Yeah. Alright, that's enough. A little chunk of it down in there. If you ever get to where you can't get it all the way down in, take that little leaf right there, push it right over top of that bait. This? Yep. Get something from the work a little hard. Now get your lure. Grab that little stick. We'll use that stick to get it out of there. We're using some night owl coyote gland lure. This stuff smells really good. Smell it. Think so, again? No. All right. Put it on your stick. There you go. Put it right there. And that's it. That's your remade set. Coyote number two. <laughs> you have it? Yeah. Yeah, you're lucky. How many years I trapped before I caught my first one? All right. Let's get her packed up. Hey, when we come back from the break, it's going to be the trapping time set of the week. Duke Traps has the most complete product line of game traps in the world. Check out the full line of body grippers for beaver, raccoon, muskrat, and more. Duke has homeowners covered as well with a full line of standard and heavy-duty live cage traps. Duke has over 30 models of animal control devices that can help you with your trapping needs. Duke now offers the number 550 and larger 650 coil springs, plus their newly developed number 2 Douglas for catching coyotes. Get more information at DukeTraps.com. Duke, America's best trap value. Hey folks, be sure to check out our all-star lineup for the upcoming season. New for 2018 is the hard-hitting Blackout Predator bait. If you're looking for a beaver-based bait with some kick, this is it. We're also proud to add to the batting order our line of mouse-based baits. If you're looking for a mice bait so pure it's practically eating cheese in the container, then you will want to try Peyton's Pretty Mouse. Maybe you're looking for a bait with some long-range appeal for those cold winter nights, then you've got to try Peyton's Dirty Mouse. 
When you're serious about trapping predators like we are, then be sure to make your next purchase at trappingtimetv.com. Hey guys, Nick Biggs here with Biggs Time Trapping. I wanted to share with you a set we use to take a lot of bobcats. Um, it's on a basically a point. There's a road coming off here, and then we're basically sitting right on the road. We catch a bunch of bobcats here every season. We use the same set. Very simple, but highly effective. I just wanted to share it with you. Now, first of all, dig your trap bed. All right, that trap is rock solid, not going to move on you. Um, we got this set up on a drag. When I can't trap, I don't really hide the chain. I like to pre-hook my drags. This main road here, that way you get your animal off the trail. And I'll pre-hook it like that. And that way when he gets caught and he starts pulling against it, his natural instinct is going to go back to the drag, which is going to take him up that road and get him out of sight. Next thing is... Uh, Polyfill under your pan or a pan cover if that's what you use. I prefer polyfill. Then I'm a peat moss guy. Love it or hate it. It tends to work for us. We never have any problems. So if you'll notice, I, I pack it in there good, but I keep that pan uncovered because I want to know where that pan is. Right there. Actually, when you're cat trapping, you could leave that pan uncovered and it wouldn't hurt you at all. I know some folks aren't confident enough to do that, but, you know, cats don't care whether that thing's covered or not. But I always like to take just a little bit of the dirt from the trap bed, and that's it. Just enough to cover that up a little bit in case a coyote were to come by here. So what we do on this set is a lot of the debris from our trap bed and a little bit that we can gather up in order to make this thing even more flashy. I like to build up what I consider like a horseshoe. Not only is that a big hole, we've got a horseshoe. We've basically got a big barrier around it and cats are easy to guide. You want to block them down really heavy. Build up that berm. And I know you're watching this and you're thinking there's no way but that's absolutely going to entice that cat. When he comes in here, we've already got the low spot in the pan. We've got a big hole. We're going to put some good, some goodies in there. And this berm around our trap pan is absolutely going to make that cat come in here and step right over that. I don't know how many bobcats we've caught on this set. It's very easy. It's very simple. And it's very effective. Last thing we're going to do... is we're going to bait it. This is Webster Predator Control SK Mice Meat. It is deadly on predators. We absolutely wear the cats out with it. Put it way down the bottom of that hole. And another thing to keep in mind about cats is a lot of guys focus on their visual. They'll hang tinsel and they'll hang CDs and things of that nature to get their attention, but cats get bored very easy. So I always, when I'm cat trapping, I like to use multiple lures, and this is Webster's Predator Control Cat Attack. I'll smear it on one side of that hole. And then I'll take another one. This happens to be um, Bang Tango by Capital Punishment, or by, I'm sorry, by Southern Snares. Brian McKee, it's very good stuff. I'll smear it on the other side of that hole. And then I'll take bobcat urine, and I like basically to, I use a lot of urine, some guys don't. I like to coat that in the urine. The last thing we do to finish this set is we use feathers. But where I'm at, they have to be synthetic. They have to be artificial. Our laws say we can't use any exposed carcass or any parts of the animal to attract or, or bait over unless it's covered. So we go by the artificial feathers. I like white because it sticks out good. Put one in the hole, put it kind of around there. And now what we've got 
is we've got a cat set with all kinds of visual attractant, all kinds of uh, oral stimulation. So they, they're not only going to see it, they're going to smell it. These feathers are going to hopefully make this thing think something has drugged something into that hole, and those are the feathers left over. I believe if you use this set, it's a simple blown out dirt hole with a big mound to step over with your pan in a shallow hole, you'll absolutely wear the cats out. I hope you have lots of luck with this out there. Good luck. Hey man, Nick, that was an awesome, awesome set. Now let's get back to the beaver action. From the hills of West Virginia, Smokey's Deer Lures presents the first and only real pre-orbital gland lure in the world. Applying pre-orbital gland lure to a licking branch will allow you to take a complete inventory of the bucks at your favorite hunting spot. Get yours at SmokiesDeerLore.com Well, you see, trappers are a special breed of people. We're dedicated, committed, and passionate about what we do and who we are. Each and every one of us has an intense desire to be the very best we can. So in the world of skinny jeans, man buns, and pumpkin spice lattes, sometimes you just have to stop, push back, and tell the world, that's not me. Whether you're from the far north or in the deep south and anywhere in between, Southern Snares can help you succeed at getting the job done and being who you are. Hey folks, if you use that tip right there, it's sure to put more fur in your shed. Now let's join up with Jason Webster as he chasing some Mississippi coyotes on a trip we did last spring. Well, we're here in Mississippi and we're first night catch, which is usually rare. We always say our rule of three back home, but uh, we came in here and seen a little bit of sign and what we got, well, we got a talker here is what we got. What we got here is real thick pines down both sides and we got a really nice today coming down through here. And as we came down through here and looked, this road makes a bend here in about 15 yards. And we just figured that this would be a perfect place to put a set. All we did was just make a little dirt hole set and worked out perfectly. Now, this coyote here, he looks like he could be a bit mangy. This is our first time trapping on this property, so we don't, um, we didn't know what we was going to get into, and it looks like they got a quite an unhealthy population. What do you think, Jason? Yeah, he's pretty skinny and, and thin furred there. I mean, we're in Mississippi too, which is a lot of difference than what we're looking at back home, but uh, there should be plenty of game for these animals to eat um, and be a little bit better. Uh, looking dog than what we got here so all right we're gonna dispatch him get him out of here and jason's gonna remake this set and i'm kind of interested to see how we're gonna do it as messed up as he has it we'll come up with something i think he can handle it all right all right now jason got this coyote out of here and our bed's pretty much established uh we used a cookie cutter when they came in here and did this so we have a real nice bed. So what he's doing here, he's taking all this duff and he's gonna pull it all back up around there. I mean, we're in a field with not a lot of, uh, there's really nothing to catch their attention. But now we've got this burn circle and we've got all this grass and stuff here. So Jason's gonna use that to his advantage and he's gonna get it all piled up there and we're gonna use it as backing. So we've probably got down this road here, 125 yards um, of straight, just a straight stretch so what we're going to do here is we're giving it a reason to want to stop and investigate this any coyote that comes down this road is going to see this pile here and with all this coyote smell that's going on here right now we're definitely going to get them to uh, come and work this set now jason's getting his trap bed there he's using a duke 175 and just got bit some of these traps they uh file down a little bit if that proves right there that doesn't a trap doesn't hurt you, I don't know what it does. Get this reset and try not to catch ourselves in a trap again. That's good TV is what that is right there. Good enough. Alright, try this again. So we get a trap bedded in there. One thing's nice about trapping in the south is you've got you don't have to worry about it, it's gonna freeze up on you. Up home we're gonna take in, uh, we're gonna do everything we can to keep this thing firing. Check it around, make sure it's solid. And he can reach down in there and he can actually add some dirt and stuff to it to make the bed just a little bit tighter. A little different trap in Pennsylvania, isn't it? Yeah, back home <laughs> we'd be freaking out worrying it's gonna freeze in on us. 
Now we're still going to use peat moss down here because we don't want to worry about uh, bringing a covering in, you know. So what we're going to do, we'll use the peat moss to try and um, get the covered up. It's it's a lot easier when you're using peat moss than it is worrying about bringing dirt in all the time. So it just makes it a whole lot nicer. And if you're worried about getting bit again, you take your glove off and just use your glove to kind of dust out your, your peat moss a little bit. Kind of keeps your fingers out of the kill. Now, because we are in the south and it's a lot warmer, I would take, we got all this nice dirt right around here. Gather up some of that duff, which seems more like sand than dirt, and just gonna sprinkle it over it. We don't want this coyote to have any type of refusal. We want him to be able to come in here and to start work this set and make it look as natural as possible. His focal point's gonna be this pile right here. So Jason's gonna work that all the way around and blend that set in really, really good. Yeah, you don't wanna sift the dirt just over the trap itself so that you have that kind of sweet spot that stands out. Move that dirt all over and give him a bigger area um, with that loose dirt for him when he starts getting on it. Now he's gonna put bait and stuff down in this hole so when this coyote comes in, he's actually gonna be working it from the side that Jason's on. He's gonna take his driver, poke him a hole down in, get it somewhat vertical. Um, we like a more vertical hole than we do the old style 45 degree because what ends up happening is when you get that 45 degree, there's a lot of different variables that come in when it, the coyotes come in as far as working the set because the trap distance plays a lot more um, importance. This way here, we don't have to worry about it as much because if he wants to get close enough to work this hole, then he's gonna have to get right over top of it. And you, you wanna try to get that bait down I like to try to get six to eight inches at least. If I can get 12 inches out of it, it's great because I want him to be able to have to actually work that hole. I don't want him to be able to come in one swipe, grab it, pull it out, and be gone with it. So try to get it down. It's another reason why I use a little bit longer of a um, tool or a stick to get my bait down in there. Now we're using some Trapping Time Blackout here. Um, it's got a kind of a mellow smell, but it's got a little bit of reach and calling power. You know, up north, we would a lot of our call stuff has skunk in it. This here has got a little bit of castor in it. Um, it's a bit of a sweeter smell and nothing rancid. You know, I've said before, I don't like using stuff that's so rock gut that you can't even um, can't even handle it. Yeah, and I'm getting that bait. That's that's where I'm bottoming out, hitting the bottom of that hole. Um, you want to get it down so they actually give them something to actually work for. Now what he's going to do now is we're going to put a little bit of uh, trapping time intruder on top of it. It's going to act a little bit of as, as a uh, almost like a call lure, but it's not going to be an overpowering skunky call lure. It's going to be just enough to uh, get him enticed in here to come in and work the set. And then a little bit of extra. Got this iron shaft that he left here all night. I'm just going to kind of tuck that up on the back side of the hole. Just as a little extra attractive. You got another piece right there too. And just stack them up there. Whether you're trapping in the far north, like here in Pennsylvania, or in the deep south, like we were with Jason on his coyote, every time we can put a coyote in a trap, it's a lot of fun. You know, we just have such a blast with these animals. And sometimes you got to change up the tactics uh, a little bit to, to be successful. You know, we had Peyton on one end who was a new trapper, um, trying to figure it all out. And then you had a veteran experienced trapper like Jason down there showing us how to do it in Mississippi. So this week we had the best of both worlds. We had new, and no offense Jason, but we had old. Uh, be sure to join us next week. I'm sure it's going to be another exciting, exciting adventure on Trapping Time. You know folks, like we always say, we're keeping the tradition alive here at Trapping Time.